The Silos list provides quick access to all available rocket launchers. You can see where they are located and what's their current status. A silo can fire only once, after which it needs time to recharge, which is indicated by the progress bar. The upgrade button can increase the level of the silo, while the number below it signifies the current condition of the building. The defensive mode can also be turned off from here. Without it, the silo will not try to intercept incoming missiles. This leaves the silo open for the attack, but at the same time, it will not enter the recharge mode after the interception and instead will be ready to use. The unit recruitment window provides information about combat parameters and costs of each unit type. After the description, Basic statistics, such as attack power, defense, speed, and HP are listed. Then we've got modifiers with other units. Unit attack and unit defense symbolize modifiers that the unit will have while fighting against the listed type. Support modifiers are active when the unit remains next to the listed allied unit type during a battle, and accuracy increases the chance to hit the enemy over a long distance. Below are the costs of production and maintenance, and at the very bottom, there's a slider to order recruitment. Notice that costs will change correspondingly to the number of units selected on the slider. You can also use the Max button to automatically select the number of units that you can currently afford. Military staff is the main center of all offensive and defensive operations. First, there's a list of all armies in the country. It includes their position, status, and whether they are within the supply range. Armies outside of the supply range have negative combat modifiers. Then there's unit composition and current commander of the army and the current experience of the general. You can directly assign or remove a general by clicking on the portrait. In the Generals section, you can quickly access all your available generals and recruit additional ones if needed. Generals profiles include name, skills, level, location, and status. Unlike spies, generals cannot travel around the map without an army, so both location and status will either show the position of the army the general is leading, or the information that he is unassigned to any armies. Generals can be unassigned, renamed, or released. Like spies, generals have two different experience levels. One is gained from land battles, and the other from the naval ones. Alert state signifies the level of combat readiness of the country. The lower the level, the more powerful combat boosts will become active, and the more powerful a nuclear attack will become active. Conversely, Low levels have a negative impact on the economy and society, so they shouldn't be used for long. Alert levels must be activated and deactivated in order, starting from level 5, which is neutral and has no effects. Activation of the lower level costs money and action points. Levels can also be limited by Parliament's veto, being at offensive or defensive war, too high warmonger level, and by too low war losses. When the armies of the warring states meet in a province, a battle ensues. To have a direct view of the battle and give orders to your units, you need to open a war theater window by clicking on the notification or the fighting armies on the map. The opposing forces are listed on the sides of the window. First, there's a list of units currently engaged, and below it are reserves that are currently not participating in the fighting. Proportions of both armies are represented by the bar at the upper part of the window. There's also your current weather on the right, 
and current commanders on the sides. You can also switch between the different camera settings using the button on the right side. In the center, there's a battlefield grid where each side of the conflict can have up to seven unit groups consisting of the same unit type. The battlefield is divided into tiles of different terrain types, such as forests and mountains. Each type has different modifiers that influence the unit standing on it. You can see the modifiers after selecting a unit by hovering over a tile. You can use the right button to order the unit to move on another tile and to attack the enemy. Positioning is extremely important, as even though the attack range is unlimited, the distance between your unit and its target reduces accuracy. Units fire in a straight line, so any allied units cross on the line of fire will get hurt. To prevent friendly fire, you can order the unit to stop firing. You can resume the attack when the line is clear. Additionally, units standing next to each other may have support bonuses for their respective attack or defense power. Check the detailed statistics to find out which units can serve as the support. The last button, Reserves, will move the unit to Reserves where it will be safe from the attacks. You can move to Reserves only units on the first line, so be careful not to venture too far away from it. When the unit is ordered to retreat, the number over the box represents how long it will take for it to leave the battlefield. Also keep in mind that during the sea battles, land units will be kept in the reserves until there are no other units left to fight. You don't have to control each unit individually. If left alone, they will move along the battlefield using their own judgment. Keep an eye on the log at the bottom of the screen to keep an eye on the happenings. Finally, you can issue special orders that for a time will influence your units and you can level up your generals to gain access to additional battle orders.